Happiness Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Thank you for tuning in to MNS Creative Us one more time. I hope and trust I find you all, my dear friends. Let us continue on our series, Women in the Bible. And for this morning, we want to look at the maids, or what we commonly refer to as the house girls. Before we go into a study of the word, why don't we pray together? Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for the privilege of interacting with people who have been sent by you. Some of them, they are of a lower ranking in terms of station in life, and yet you have used them mightily. If only we could benefit from, and thus saith the Lord, for from the lips of their mouth there comes healing. From the lips of their mouth there comes answered prayers and celebration. Be with us as we consider your word and bless us mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friends, I wish to raise two issues from two women that set themselves apart, distinguish themselves greatly. The first is in the Old Testament, and she is not given by name, but only by designation, as the servant in the house of Naaman in Syria, where the master of the house had become a leper. This particular maid distinguished herself. The second is given by name, and she is found recorded in the book of Acts chapter 12. Her name was Rhoda. She was the servant in the house of Mary, the mother of John Mark, and she set herself apart. We shall look at how she distinguished herself. Let us begin with the unnamed little maid in the house of Naaman. And we find her in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. Let us begin at chapter 2, at verse 2, pardon me. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would that my lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would cure him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. Verse 5, And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. You know, I'm very fascinated by the work of this little maid. She is referred to in this denigrating tone, a maid that is little. She is a maid that is little, little in stature, and little in rank, and she is a maid and lowly in terms of her station. But above all, she is a slave. Of all these things that seem to lock her down, I want you to notice this at point number one. Your faith can change a lot of things. When she opened her mouth, she changed things in the home. When she opened her mouth, she changed things in the political sphere. When she opened her mouth, she changed the itineraries of the royalty. When a maid opens her mouth, kings move. I was waiting for that to sink in. When a maid opens her mouth, there is peace in the home. There is hope in the home. Only when she opens her mouth, when God has ordered her to speak, only when she opens her mouth, when God has pushed her to share the word and testify of the heavens above. The faith of the little man, I mean the little maid, bred hope in the Canaanites, it caused them to jump into immediate action and take part, and take an active part. This was the active part on the part of the king, as he promised, I'm going to write the letter. An active part on the part of the master and general of the army, as he sought to seek health and restoration in Israel, all because a maid had faith. Who was this maid? She is not known by name. Who was this maid? She is remembered by her faith in causing a miracle that had never happened before. And Christ refers to this miracle later on and says, only Naaman was healed when there were so many lepers in Israel. What was the reason for that healing? It was on account of the witnessing and the testimony of a little maid. She had not seen much. She was taken out into bondage, out into slavery as a little toddler, a young girl. Surely the Syrians must have been charged with child labor. But even though she was out there, she was old enough 
to know that God can do the impossible. Nothing is impossible for our Lord. And therefore, at point number two, let no one despise you because of your stature, youth, or gender. Paul even writes to Timothy and says, let no man look down upon you because of your age. And I want to say to every woman out there, let no man look down upon you because of your gender. You have dynamite with you, young lady. You have dynamite in you, little maid. Understand your role. It is a role that when you understand, even your master will not understand it. She had been employed. She had been retained so that she could uh, maintain. She, she could wait upon Naman's wife. Her role was to go and pick this and that, run on errands, but she realized I can do more. May I challenge some lady out there? As you are going out into the workspace, most probably you are being treated like the little maid. As you get there, realize you can do more than being sent around. You can make a difference. And what is the difference that she brought? She noticed my master needs psychological relief. She is tending to a man who is not getting any better by any day soon. And then she comes about with a solution. It does not mean when you are lower in rank, you cannot come up with solutions. It does not mean you cannot proffer solutions. Do proffer them and do proffer them and make a difference. Get involved. Get involved while you're waiting upon your master. And point number three, as we move on into the New Testament, we find that what is happening in the house of Mary, the congregants have come together to pray for Peter who is incarcerated. As they pray, this particular maid by the name Rhoda becomes part of the prayer band that is at home. Have you noticed how maids also become part of whatever program is going on at home? When we go out into the gardens, they go with us. When we go into town, they go with us. When we go to church, they go with us. When we go for funerals, they go with us. When we go for social gatherings, our maids, they go with us. And Rhoda was not an exception. Prayer was called upon in the house of Mary and she knelt along with the prayer warriors and prayed for Peter. May God bless those who have the spirit of maids, those who say when there is a program, count me in. When something that has to do with the Lord and the alleviation of any suffering upon a soul, count me in and invest in it emotionally. And such was the attitude of this particular maid. As others were praying, she was soon called back to her duties as there was a knock at the door. And this maid realizes, yes, I've come to the prayer altar, but I still have a duty to do as a servant. And she goes out to attend to the door. As she get, gets there at point number four, realize that duties will lead to privilege. As you go about your duties, do not neglect them. They create privileges, young woman. They create privileges, young lady. They create privileges for you as an employee or even as an entrepreneur. Go about your duties diligently. As she goes out to open the door, she realizes the voice behind the door is that of Peter. It's that of Simon, the son of Jonah. Elated, overjoyed, excited, she forgets her duties and runs back to testify. Peter has come. Reorder your prayers to prayers of thanks. Come and receive him as you go about your duties. Do not go about them willy-nilly. Do not be flippant. Do them so well. When you do them so well, God will give you the privilege of seeing prayers answered firsthand. You are going to be the first one to witness the hand of the Lord at work. You are going to be the first one to see the deliverance of the Lord. As she goes back to tell them what is happening at point number five. You are going to find that the Bible says in the home and uh, vision, they said unto her, you are crazy. In the King James Version, they said, you are mad. There is no way Peter can be at the door. But she stood her ground. The Bible says in the King James Version, she affirmed what she knew to be the case. The home and son of vision says she insisted that Peter is at the door. And what am I saying unto you, young lady? When you know things to be the truth, Stand your ground. Do not back down. Stand your ground like Rhoda. It doesn't matter even if you are low in ranking and station. Stand your ground for the truth. For the truth shall indeed set you free. 
We need rotters nowadays who are going to stand for the truth, even though they are alone. We need rotters nowadays who are going to be the first ones to see the hand of the Lord at work. We need the ladies who are like the son, I mean the daughter who was in, in Naaman's house, and who goes on to say, even though I have not seen it with my own hands, I believe the Lord can use his prophet to heal the man of God. Are there ladies like these nowadays? Are they still available? And they're saying, Lord, here I am. Send me in spite of where I am. In spite of my position and ranking, send me. I will make a difference. In Jesus' name, may the Lord bless you as I pray for you. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, here are your children. They have decided for you. Here are your children. They have said, Lord, what you place in our mouths, we shall speak it. We may be in foreign lands, away from home, away from parents, away from all our loved ones. Even though we have our rights violated in bondage, we will still speak for you, dear Lord. When we join in prayer sessions and when prayers are answered, dear Lord, we will testify for you. The hearts of your children are lifted up. I pray for these ladies as I pray for the gentlemen too. You are a respecter of no man or woman. Bless us, one and all. In Jesus' name, amen.